Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I replace the CV boots on my Mitsubishi L200. If you don't have a Mitsubishi L200, I hope this video is helpful to you because so most CV joints are the same. I also show how I take apart one CV joint um, because I was curious how to do this. I've never done this job before and I just wanted to see how to do it. I highly recommend that you have plenty rags on standby and if you have them, the latex gloves. If not, like you can see in the video, I have just some normal work gloves and use some old clothes because the CV grease is very dirty and it tends to get everywhere. Before you know it, your tools are full of grease, your gloves are full of grease and if you start scratching your face like I do, then your face will be full of grease. So you can see here, I'm jacking up the front of the car. I've already got the wheels at the back chocked, so the car's not going to roll away because I am doing this on a slight hill, pointing downwards. And in true Bulgarian style, I am using logs as stands, just propping them below the cross member that runs below the bottom of the engine. Maybe some of you have noticed what I've done wrong already. I should have loosened the nuts for the wheels on the ground when the weight was on the tyres because now you can see my impact driver is struggling and luckily I can grab the wheel and use the breaker bar to loosen the nuts but I've done this actually before in the past where I've had to lower the car again, loosen the nuts, then jack it up again, take the wheel off. So take my advice and don't make that mistake. That's why we need the compressor in our house. Oh yeah. I'm trying to get David um, a super garage. <laughs> <laughs> so he can do all of that so quick and easy. One wheel is off. Yay! I'll take this off the brake caliper. The car? But I don't want to take the brake hose off, so what I'll do is I'll tie a bungee cord around it to there, so it just hangs there. Yeah, yeah, that was loose. Very loose. <laughs> hmm. Right in the spot. Hey! Not supposed to do that. Or just... Who's that? Oh, right. the brake can't bro. This is a well-known tip, is if you're going to take off the brake caliper, you want to try and support it somehow. So the way I use do it is just using a bungee cord. And if you watch any other car videos, you see many people do it like this. It's just a nice way that you can keep the weight off the brake hose, because if you let the brake caliper hang, it's quite a weight you can damage this brake hose pretty easily. Here you can see me taking off the grease cover for the CV axle. Uh, you have to do this to expose the little clip that is actually the only thing that's holding the CV axle from sliding in and outside the hub. Uh, so once you take this off, you've got to try and carefully pry this little circlip out without letting it fly away. Now I'm taking off the nut that holds on the upper ball joint or the some people call it the wishbone, upper wishbone ball joint, upper control arm ball joint but you have to take that off which is fastened to the steering nut. Next I'm moving on to the steering tie rod which is also fastened to the steering knuckle, we have to remove that. 
the reason why we have to remove all these pieces is we actually need to remove the complete hub away from the car because like I said before on this side on the outer Just side it it's only uh, held in by a clip but on the inner side it's got four bolts on a flange um, on the opposite side on the passenger side of the car because now this clip is showing me on the driver side the passenger side actually just once you take the hub away you can um, just pull it out you don't actually have to remove the hub in its entirety if you don't want to but it does make it a heck of a lot easier here I'm removing the pin that's through the castle nut on the lower ball joint or the lower control arm, lower wishbone ball joint and once this is out I can lift the hub away and we'll be able to start tackling the next part of the job. Good. So that's the hub and the off. I think I need to unbolt these bolts on this side, I'm not too sure. Let's try this. I hope this is the way to do it. Nope, not the way to do it. I have to try and get where my this is nope. the trick you have to get the, the the bald head at the back to loosen the nut off but it's really oh, it's blind it is it's really difficult I think I've got it now Ah, okay, so I'm trapping the, I'm putting the, the see, see, get where I'm, get where my face is. Can you see the, the spanner? Yeah. I've got the spanner on the bolt head. Right. The, the, the handle of the spanner is, uh, well it was, it was resting against the, bolt head. The chassis. Right. So I don't have to hold on to it. Uh-huh, yeah. Right. <laughs> see? I see. Well. It would have worked in theory. <laughs> Can you see the spanner? Yes. And it's resting against like the a, chassis. Cro a cross member on the chassis. Yep. So then it's holding it tight for us because the whole the, the spanner wants to go like that. Yeah. It's moving. It's gonna fall. Yep. This part was super frustrating for me. In hindsight, it would have been a lot better if I took the shock absorber off at the bottom, left it connected at the top, and just sort of pushed it up into its case and, and gave me a little bit more access. But yeah, the access already was was limited, and you kind of need hands like Budgie's feet to be able to get in there. But uh, you must have heard me say on the video, try and get the spanner at the back and get it to rest against something and use the tools that you have at your advantage you know so if i'm going to be turning it anti-clockwise make it so that the spanner is going to rest against something if it was to turn anti-clockwise then it frees up a hand for you to work a little bit smarter instead of working harder Oh. Must just be on the other side. No surprise. Yeah. Right, oh yeah, that's one off. Okay. You can see where I've hit it before? Yeah. Oh sometimes, yeah, sometimes the joints are hard to split. They're very seized. But I've got this tool which I've never used before, which I fancy using actually. Right, come on then. So, you put this in. 
I'm not going to show the removal process for both sides of the car, but I just wanted to show a little few clips to show how I got off some stubborn ball yeah. joints. Um, normally, I can get away with just hitting part of the hub and it cracks the the tension and they just pop loose. But this time I actually used a special um, ball joint splitter, which I've never used before and I was pleasantly surprised how easy it makes the job. That worked really well. I know, how good was that? that was wow. Really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was awesome that. Yeah. Because it just it was just pushing it down like that. Yeah, yeah. Here you can see me removing the drive shaft from the passenger side of the car, which is a little bit different from the other side I previously mentioned had the flanges and the bolts. Now that this is off, we're gonna go into the workshop to start the real work. And this is the part so I said at the start of the video. Have your rags, have your gloves, old clothes, because it's gonna get messy. I don't think I recorded this part, but I, I had already hit this CV joint uh, previously. But you should note that the piece of metal I used to hit it with was softer than steel. So I had a block of aluminium, you may have brass, uh, something like this, but I'm hitting the inner race of the CV joint, which is the part you can see the rattle resting upon. The reason you have to hit it is there's a little inside circlip on the shaft itself. So when you take it off and you can see it in the video, the splines of the shaft stop. There's a groove with a little, uh, like a spring clip. And that's what's holding the, the CV joint onto the axle itself. So we have to get that over the spring. When you're hitting it, the spring itself will sort of compress and allow the CV joint to pass over it. In the end I gave up on this junior hacksaw, the blade was actually really dull so I opted for the tin snips but use whatever you have to hand, even hammer and chisel, a sharp chisel would break those. You can also unclip the clips, there is a way with, um, if you have some needle nose pliers you can actually get the clips off but easier said than done. At this stage I have it all apart enough that I can replace the CV boots if I like. I wanted to uh, try and get this side off but I was hitting it and hitting it and it wasn't going. Uh, maybe if I hit a little bit harder but I could have also broken it which I didn't want to do. So I did my best to clean out the grease, repack it with grease and then slide over the CV boots. You can get special uh, stretchy CV boots but then you'll need to buy a CV cone Right. And that way you can get, you can actually stretch the CV boots over the CV joints themselves without having to dismantle it. So it's a less less messy method, but the CV boots that I just had on this uh, car, they only lasted one year and I didn't really work the car very hard. So I thought this time I would try and use the, the non-stretchy boots and see how long they will last. A little bit of grease on the inside of the CV boot just helps it to slide down the shaft a bit easier and 
I'm trying my best here to keep the grease confined to the inside of the CV joint because that stuff is brutal when it gets stuck to something, it is a nightmare. Now for the tricky part is getting this clip onto the CV joint and to get it tightened. I must say, having somewhere there to help you to hold it whilst you squeeze it tight is very useful. So if you can find a friend, I would definitely recommend that because by yourself is going to be very tricky, very, very tricky. Here you can see my friend coming in to give me a hand. He's yeah. using the screwdriver to push the end of the clip close in so it doesn't pop off because I found sometimes it likes to pop off when you're trying to tighten it. Yeah. So if you were by yourself, maybe if you get the, uh, the end of it and bend it inwards, not too much, and then it's less likely to pop off. Here I'm showing a certain type of clip where you have some pliers which actually nips up the clamp and squeeze it so it's a smaller size making it tight but later on in the video I'm showing the other type where you have to have the tool which grabs onto the clip and you wind it up and it pulls it tight uh, just by chance I had both of these because I bought um, two different types of CV boots well they're the same type but they came with different types of clips but I'm glad because now I've, I can show and I can also learn how to do both types but I would recommend trying to get the ones that use the pliers because it's far easier to do. One point to make is make sure the smaller portion of the CV boot is hard up against the little shoulder on the axle itself. If you look carefully you can see there's a little sort of raised edge on which you have to put the smaller part of the CV boot onto. If you don't put it hard up against this raised edge, then most likely you're going to cause undue wear to the boot when it's doing its normal operation and ultimately lead it to a shorter lifespan. Like that, but I don't know if that's going to be tight enough. This is the smaller clip getting tightened, and I definitely found that this room? was trickier than the bottom one, uh, mainly because I think when the it's it's more compressed in a smaller size it, it wants to spring open more so this is in my, in my opinion the more tricky of the two good? yeah that's pretty good no it's not so the way you get these CV joints apart to clean it if you rotate it which is easier said than done and expose one ball. Yeah. Pick it out. Basically, you just got to keep on doing that until you. Not the Another whole thing comes out. Oh, I think okay. See. Mhm. Mm next one. Next one. Next one. And then you take the thing out. Few gentle love taps.
So we're stuck on these two now. Should come out now. Oh, he's still he's stopping it. Mm -hmm. Is there any more left in? That should just pull out now. Let me see now. So dirty. <laughs> so messy this. Can you see inside? Let's just give it a good clean first. Um, yeah, it's like a yeah, in really good condition actually. Mm -hmm. Like there's no rust. That's well it's not rust, stuff. but it, it it's full of oil so it won't rust. Full of grease. But there's no like bad marks or mm -hmm. there's a little bit of you kinda of feel it though, but you can see a little bit of like Spread. I don't know if uh, you can get that yeah. on the camera. It's so very slight, but pretty good that. This raised edge yeah. is up. So get it back in. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like you have to pivot that in one of the holes. Yeah. He says before messing it up. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's it. That's it now. Those grooves line up with the the Close, gaps. Yeah. The gaps. How did I do it again, Nadia? A little bit on the angle. This was a big, big mistake to put the grease in first. They just made reassembly super greasy, super messy. So take my advice get it all in together a little bit of grease to help the, the balls to move and for you to get more access to put the other balls in um, but yeah leave the bulk of the grease until you're ready to put the boot on now Just trying here to use a screwdriver to lever the inner race around to give enough access to get those balls back in where they need to sit, but it's proven pretty yeah, difficult. And you'll see me using a hammer. It's not so bad. I'm not smashing it, you know. It is a steel hammer. A copper hammer would have been better, but then maybe a little bit of the shards of copper would have gotten inside, and I wouldn't have wanted that. Um, so I'm just gently tapping. It looks worse than it actually is. But you have to remember, this is all hardened steel, really hardened steel. It's not mild steel. So a few gentle love taps with a hammer is not going to damage it. Thank you. 
Yeah, it's in. Oh, Good. quite together. Bit of tap tap. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that. Hey. Okay. Goes to one side. For some reason the circlip on this one was a little bit more open than the other one so I'm just removing it here just to allow the boot to slide over a bit easier and not get cut or nicked or anything like this and then once the boot's over I just put it back. So, before you forget, put your ring back on. And here I am giving a few taps to uh, get the CV joint back onto the shaft. But here you can see I lack the oomph, the, the gumption to get it back on. And my friend gets it on back with one fell swoop, one swing, boom, and it's on. Try to have the inner race of the CV joint perfectly in line so you don't have any problems when you uh, put everything back together. Those splines have to be pretty much lined up for them to, to mate together properly. I did. Yeah, try. Oh, <laughs> sniper. Look. Either, either pack. Again. Again. Again, again. So this is the second set of CV boots I'm putting together and you can see like I previously mentioned that now is the different type of clip so you can see the different type of tool you need which actually you have to feed the clip into and then start winding it which pulls the clip tighter. It's pretty damn tight. Mm -hmm. Right, now what does this do? Cut. It cuts? I think so. <laughs> I don't know. I think you meant that. Aha, flip it. In all honesty, I don't actually know if I was using this tool correctly. All I know is that it worked and the CV boots are still on and they haven't come off. Um, I don't know if there's a part of the tool which cuts the clip for you. But what I did was, once it got tight enough, I was happy. I just folded it over, back on itself, and then friction was enough to keep it in place. I removed the tool, and then I could cut the excess part of the clip. And then there's these two little tabs either side of the clip that you can fold in, which is sort of just the way that it, it secures it so it's not going to come loose.
Just like the other type of clip, the smaller part of the CV boot proved to be more difficult than the larger part. So there you have it, that's how I changed the CV boots on my Mitsubishi L200 pickup truck. If you found this video helpful, let me know in the comments below. If you found any differences on your car, I'd also like to know, it'd be quite interesting to know. Every little bit of info helps. The way you put it back together is just in the reverse order, so just put the video on reverse. <laughs> and then you can see exactly how to do it. But if you've gotten this far, I'm sure you can put it back together by yourself. If you like this video, please consider giving it a like, maybe subscribe, maybe go and see what other videos we have. And uh, you never know, what we might have might just be what you're looking for. Don't say bad things about it.